Hey, what's up everyone? Sinister here with another Game Anniversary video. Let's go ahead and get started with Golden Axe, which was released by Sega on January 27, 1989. Yeah, Sega was hitting it big in the arcades, just like Capcom and Konami, respectively. Now I'm going to break down how Golden Axe became to be, starting with its history. Makata Uchida was the man behind Ultra Beast a year prior and also worked on Golden Axe as well. Last year I've already done an anniversary video on Ultra Beast. If you want to check it out, I'll leave it in the description below. Uh, moving on, the crew that helped him make this game was small, and Uchida himself is a fan of the Conan movies, and wanted to create a game just like Double Dragon, but except with sword and sorcery in this place. It took him a year to get Golden Axe to the arcade, and it paid up because this game launched many ports on multiple platforms like consoles and PC, plus its many sequels that follow after that. Now, moving on to the story, gonna be short about that. The game is set in the land of Yuria and is ruled by the tyrannical Death Adder who wields the legendary Golden Axe. If that's not bad enough, the King and Princess are held prisoner too. So it's up to our three heroes, Gilius Thunderhead, Axe Battler, and Tyrus Flare. All three of them want vengeance against Death Adder because he murdered their loved ones. So it's now up to them to rescue not only the villagers but also before facing the Big Bad himself. You know, they all got their weapons, you know, their respective magic skills. And they got those beasts along the way. So. Alright, moving on to the nitty gritty, the experience. And so yeah, I didn't get to play the arcade version at first, but the Genesis port with a friend. You know, he you know, he had it, you know, went to his house and played it. Have both have, have fun with it, you know, taking out the bad guys, you know, taking the beasts and mowing them down. But however it got to the fifth level, you used up all our lives and contained, so no <laughs> bummer there, but however like a year later, I was able to play this game again with my cousin. We both got to Deathbringer, which is the real t the final boss of that version because, you know, more of that later. Um, it was cool when we finally beat that game. So, uh, my friend, he let me borrow the PC port just to try it out, see how it is. Like, pff, the experience was very bad. I, and I do mean bad because not only the gameplay was very slow, the animation it was choppy. I mean, it was very hard to play. So, Back then, the PC, you need to have a high-end PC just to play a game like this, just to play it smoothly and all that. But, anywho, you know, I mean, oh, after I returned that game to him, so, uh, fast forward many years later, thanks to emulation, I was able to find and play the arcade version. I was like, I was like, yeah, man, I, I definitely have fun with this, man, because it was so cool, you know, I would play the arcade version without, you know, popping in any quarters and all that stuff. But, but it was funny enough, they, like, if you have, like, an Xbox 360 or a play, PS3, you know, you can also play this game at home. And it was fun, you know, playing it alone or with others or online. So, however you see fit, so the experience is there for, for everybody, like, to relive those memories and everything. So, um, you yeah, know, Gilius was my favorite because, you know, I like using his lightning magic. He's the strongest of the three. Uh, Axe Battler, he's, like, the, you know, the average guy, like, the balanced guy in the middle. And of course, he uses Earth magic. And you have Tyrus Flair, the Amazon. She's the you know, the weakest and the fastest of the three. But however, she has the best magic because get that bad boy maxed out, and that dragon comes out there and starts frying everybody on the screen. So, I mean, you couldn't beat that. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was cool, of, like you know, getting the being all the bad guys and finally get up to death at her himself because. Like, Dude, man, he was tough to deal with because, you know, with him being so tall, so big, so strong, plus he has magic himself, uh, he can take you out in a few hits and stuff like that. And, of course, you got those annoying skeletons always surrounding them because even if you kill, like, one or two of them, another one spawns in his place. So, yeah, it was cool finally, you know, taking him out and seeing that axe flying in the air and finally, you know, finish him off. Yeah, even though you rescued the king and queen, but in the arcade version, that's it. The game is over and <laughs> stuff like that. You can start again and probably at a higher difficulty, whoever you see fit. But if you played the game on the PC or on the Genesis, there's an extra level in there, which, you know, that's what spawns Deathbringer. And, of course, those skeletons are always around them. Well, like I mentioned her earlier about him, he's the real final boss of that game. So, basically, he's the master of Death Adder. So, he, he's probably the one that gave him his powers anyway, so... Yeah, so if you take him out, then you get the true ending of the game, but only on that. But like I said, the arcade version was short, but it's meant to take their money because that's what it is, the form of gambling. So, so yeah, so I, basically overall, the Genesis port and the arcade versions were my favorites. So. And now down to the verdict. I give this game a four and a half out of five. So for those who played it back then, drop your experience down in the comments down below. 
If y'all enjoyed this video, drop a like because this motivates me to make more. This is Sinister. Be easy.